Hey guys, and welcome back to Hoosier Hardware. And today I'm sort of putting back together my test bench, which hasn't been together for a while now. And I'm putting on it a very unique motherboard. Now taking a mobile CPU and strapping it onto a mini ITX or micro ATX motherboard, that's nothing new. We've seen that before. When you go to places like AliExpress, there's a lot of old CPUs that get strapped onto those motherboards or even mobile CPUs. But the thing about this one is you're getting a Ryzen 7840HS engineering sample strapped onto a mini ITX motherboard. Now that's notable because the 7840HS has eight cores, 16 threads, Zen 4, fairly low power consumption considering the performance that you're gonna get out of it. And on top of that, you have Radeon 780M graphics, which gives you also an AV1 encoder. IO isn't really that great. Also, you do get a physically X16 PCIe slot, though it is really important to understand it runs at by eight speed, though, albeit in PCIe Gen 4. So you're gonna wanna pay attention to what graphics cards you pair with this thing if you're putting it into a gaming system. And to be super clear about this, when I say it's on my test bench, Yes, I will be very cognizant of the types of things I'm putting on there. I do have another motherboard with a proper desktop Ryzen CPU in it to sort of play the role of a real regular uh, motherboard CPU combo when I need to test things out at actually by 16 speed. But as a fun toy to play with, this motherboard is pretty cool. So one of the quirks of this Ryzen 7 7840HS motherboard is this thing so if you are used to using motherboards where you can swap a cpu and swap a cpu out you probably don't really see this type of giant cold plate very often now this is basically similar to your heat spreader on a cpu the big difference is this thing is actually pretty chunky because the mobile chip underneath is really quite small and so this is not a super precise measurement, but this thing is basically in the neighborhood of six millimeters thick. So there is gonna be less efficient cooling that happens between the mobile CPU and the cooler that you're choosing to use with this thing. Now you could always remove the cold plate and depending on what your cooler is, you might actually be able to make direct contact with the die underneath, sort of like uh, GPU coolers do. But for the moment, we're going to just roll with this and I'm going to be installing a uh, Arctic uh, Freezer 33 cooler onto this. So let's get that done. Worth noting, I actually did replace the thermal compound underneath the, uh, the cold plate here with some MX4 as well. I don't know if the stuff underneath is good or not, but I figured I would go ahead and be thorough because if everything works out well, then I don't need to ever really remove this cooler in the near future. So let's hope that that helps as well. And the last thing I'll note is not only is the surface of my cooler not particularly large, but the die itself underneath there is not a large thing either. So you don't really need to cover the whole surface with thermal paste, just the part that's obviously going to be touching your cooler. Now, do be careful here. There is really not much clearance at all between the fan and the RAM here. So if you have a cooler that's a little bit thicker than the Freezer 33, you may end up get stuck moving the fan to the backside where there might be just a little bit more room, but that is something to be aware of when you're sort of picking out your cooler. Okay, so here we are in CPU-Z. You see a max TDP of 45 watts for this chip. You will notice this is an engineering sample, but we still get eight cores, 16 threads, which is what we're looking for from this CPU. So go ahead and close that. We have hardware info running here on the right just to show us the temperatures that we're getting reported from the CPU. Now we're gonna put it under a Cinebench load and see what happens. So we're gonna let this run for about 10 minutes and we'll come back and see where it ended up. I lied, let's actually run it for 10 minutes. Now let's go. Uh, 
Okay, now that we are done, a few noteworthy items. Our score settled in at about 16,501, which, okay, okay, solid. Um, on the CPU side of things, a little bit warmer than I would love to see uh, with the maximum temperature being 85.8 there. Um, that's a little bit higher than I would love to see, but again, that cold plate is a lot of distance for heat to travel through before it actually gets somewhere that it can be sort of pulled out of that cold plate. It's a very large cold plate. Now the good news is I was taking some FLIR footage about five minutes into the test and as far as power delivery goes, I don't see any reason to be concerned whatsoever from that footage. So um, if you're running full tilt for a very long period of time, yeah, your temperatures might be getting up there, but if you're just gaming for the most part on a CPU like this, in a setup like this, provided that your case has decent airflow and you have a decent cooler on it, it's not going to be a major problem um, because you can get a $30 tower cooler and be good to go on that front. So I wouldn't be too concerned about those temperatures, but if you did want to get creative, you could always look to get that cold plate off of there altogether and find a cooler that could actually mount directly to uh, the die of the chip, though do so at your own risk because mounting pressure and all that, the, the, the chip itself is gonna be more fragile than that cold plate. So definitely do so at your own risk. And also I would recommend replacing the stock thermal paste that came on the cold plate on the underside of it, because if nothing else, MX4 is probably a nice little step up from the stock stuff. The stock stuff seemed a little bit dried up to me. Uh, so probably worth your time before you mount your cooler to at least pull the cold plate off and replace that stock thermal paste with something that's almost certainly a little bit better. Whatever comes with your CPU cooler would almost certainly be just fine. So I will go ahead and link in the description down below the exact motherboard CPU combo that I picked up for this video. There are of course several nuances if you're trying to build out a gaming PC using this particular setup, but if you sort of fit your build within the parameters, it is a great way to save money. You're getting a motherboard and a really solid CPU for a very affordable price. I think uh, when I bought mine after shipping and everything, by the time it showed up to my door, it was less than $300. Eight cores, 16 threads, pay a little bit of attention to what type of GPU you're putting in there. Make sure you have a decent cooler on it to uh, keep it cool and you're off to the races. Like it's actually a really good way of getting up and running. Uh, especially if you're looking for a mini ITX form factor. So with that, if you like the video, like, share, subscribe, all that stuff, comment down below and let me know what you think about this type of motherboard sort of combo. Is this something you would go for or is this something you're basically gonna avoid forever and just watch some videos about? Let me know down below. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware. I'll see you all in the next video.